Hey guys, it's Brit, and I wanted to talk with you guys about something I read recently, and that's The Graveyard Apartment by Mariko Koike. This is an English translation by Deborah Bolivier Boehm, and I read this in less than 24 hours. This is a horror novel, uh, specifically it is a Japanese horror novel, which in in my opinion, and this is obviously biased because, you know, I have connections and family um, in Japan, but Japanese horror seems to be kind of its own brand of horror. And this is so delightfully Japanese. So I'm going to read you guys the summary and then go into a bit of my my thoughts on the book. I read this in less than a day and oh, gosh, I, I can't recommend this highly enough. Um, this was a buddy read with Devin and uh, well, it was supposed to be a buddy read with Devin and then I finished it by myself. Um, so whoops. Anyway, the graveyard apartment is a is the suspenseful tale of a young husband and wife who believe they have found the perfect home for their family to grow into, only to realize that the apartment's idyllic setting harbors the, spectacular, the specter of evil and that the longer they stay, the more trapped they become. A young married couple hiding a dark secret move with, with their little daughter into a brand new apartment tower built next to a graveyard. As strange and terrifying occurrences begin to unfold, people in the building start to move out one by one until the young family is left alone with someone or something lurking in the basement. You will never feel comfortable in an elevator or a basement ever again. So, yes, this is um, set in the 80s um, in Tokyo. And this takes place from March to July, I believe. Um, yeah, July. So the family members are the the mother's name is, and I I can't do these in an American accent, guys. I apologize. I, I'd really have to think about it to do it, but the um. The mother's name is is Misao. The father's name is Teppe, and the daughter's name is Tama. And um, Teppe has a a brother named Tetsuji, and um, Tetsu has a wife named Naomi and so uh, they also have a dog named Cookie um, the 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 family um, not not Tetsu and Naomi but um so Tetsu or not Tetsu Tepe uh, Misao and Tamao and Cookie and their bird, Kyoko, all move into this apartment. And really weird stuff begins to happen. The moment that they all move in, uh, Kyoko, who is this little finch that is four years old, suddenly dies of, 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 it, they just woke up and Kyoko was dead. Um, which was very strange because Pyoko was very much in good health. Pyoko was only four years old. Um, the mother and father tried to explain it away a little bit, um, but every explanation that they come up with doesn't really make any logical sense. For at first, they they say, "Oh, maybe maybe Cookie and Pyoko were playing too rough. Something happened." But um, Cookie is a fairly mild mannered dog and um they they know each other's limits so that didn't make sense so um they call Tamao in and they say you know um Kyoko has died Kyoko 
when you say pyoko 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 by the way um that that's like the japanese equivalent of of uh ribbit 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 so um the the bird's name was essentially a ribbit um yeah that's cute um the the daughter tamao is just beginning kindergarten so she's very very young and the neighbors have also um moved into the apartment they have um they have a child the same age as tamao and uh they get along great and they go to the same school um there's some bullying issues with with tamao and the neighbor's daughter um they call they they people throw sand on them and call them graveyard apartment kids um and that's that's um the parents really struggle with that um and as as the book says they they gradually people start moving out because things just get too creepy um sometimes the tv goes out the radio um uh not the radio the the elevator uh has issues a lot of the time especially when people are going down in the basement um the kids go down in the basement and Kamal gets gets hurt uh very badly she needs to go to the hospital um they can't once again they can't find an explanation as to how Tamao got hurt she just she just did um they notice the dog cookie um gets really anxious and and growls at things that aren't there um cookie is very protective um Tamao doesn't seem to want to go anywhere without somebody or cookie and um Tamao also mentions seeing Pyoko a lot and um at first the parents chalk this up to uh, an overactive imagination um Tamao says mom mom mama um you know Pyoko says that that this is a bad place that that, that this is dangerous and she's a kindergartner so they they kind of write it off as her just having a really overactive imagination and uh, but she keeps insisting that Pyoko the bird um visits her at night and um they 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 humor her for a while and eventually uh, as the synopsis says they they're left all alone um i was reading some of the reviews on amazon and the biggest criticism that i noticed about this book is that a lot of the the people were complaining that a lot of the dialogue doesn't sound um very realistic and i think that's just people being unfamiliar with how the japanese language works um i thought that this was a beautiful translation it still read very japanese i even told devin as i was uh reading that i would kind of, when people were talking i would automatically um translate it in in my head um so it sounded really japanese uh to me um the the japanese have a certain way of speaking that's that's difficult to translate um they say anyway a lot at the beginning of sentences or already um they all we also tend to say um things like um right at the end of our sentences and uh that that remains in these sentences so while people were criticizing that uh given 
the nature of the Japanese language, um, it sounds strange to an English speaker unfamiliar with the Japanese language, but for somebody who speaks Japanese on a daily basis, it didn't sound strange to me at all. But, um, yeah, I can't recommend this highly enough. Go pick up The Graveyard Apartment by Mariko Koike if you really like horror or if you've never read a horror novel before um, or a Japanese horror novel. If you want to, to get a sense of what Japanese horror is like, that The Graveyard Apartment is perfect. But anyway, guys, those are my thoughts. Um, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now. Ciao. Matana.